Okay, um, today I'm going to make a very simple cooking spoon. Um, and I'm starting out with a piece of holly, which I've already shaped down to a very rough sort of flat piece of wood. Cooking spoons are just very basic, flat. They don't need to be very elaborate. Um, but the purpose of this is to show you all the different processes that you go through to make a spoon. They're all the same processes for whatever spoon you're making, really. Um, so I've marked this out, um, um, and it's going to be sort of pear-shaped bowl. Um, and the first thing you do is mark out the spoon on the wood, um, and then we'll start shaping it. Uh, most of the work is done with an axe. Um, but uh, this is a this is a lightweight a lightweight carving axe that that you use for this purpose. So first thing is to cut the back. So you start to shape the back just very roughly. And then you take out the, the sides down to roughly the width of the handle that you want. Okay, right, the next stage is um, more precise. You have to get more precise um, the further you progress with something like this. So the back is more or less shaped. Um, I need to now use a knife to carry on shaping the back, but also to shape the, uh, the curve of the spoon, the neck of the spoon. Uh, and I do that with a knife, so most of the rest of this work is going to be done with a knife. I'm going to cut the outline The thinner you, the line that you use to mark, the more accurate you can be. You see quite a lot of people use a great big thick marker, but then you lose track of the actual shape that you're trying to go for. So. I like to leave a little nodule at the end until I finish just to make sure in case I need to stand it up and do any more axe work. Now I won't be damaging the corner, the edge of the spoon.
before I carve out the inside of the bowl, um, I need to round out the outside of the bowl because once you've carved the inside, you can't have you don't have much flexibility for shaping the outside. That's why I always shape the outside of the bowl first um, to get it to make sure it's symmetrical. Make sure it's not too thick. You don't actually need a lot of depth in a spoon, despite what some people might think. When you come to make a spoon, you realise it doesn't need to be that deep. Even for even for serving food, it doesn't need to hold a, a lot. And it's got to be strong. That's the secret. Isn't it? And it's got to be symmetrical. No good having a, a one-sided spoon with a bent handle. It's just impossible to use. So I'm just making sure that the, the thickness of the spoon is right. It's too thick there in the neck. You can always thin out the neck. It's surprising how strong it stays even when it's thin. I'm just trying to make sure the handle is straight now um, and starting to shape it. It's not, um, it's not particularly comfortable, it's okay. But you need to, it needs to be um, more comfortable to use than that. The more precise bits, if you use the, the tip one inch nearest the end of the knife, it tends to be the sharpest part of the blade because it's the part that never gets used. <laughs> Most people use the bottom section of the blade for shaping like this and never use the tip. So the tip is usually sharper. I'm just marking out now for for cutting out the inside of the bowl. So I now I'm just marking the the uh, the edge of my of my bowl uh, because when you cut out the bowl, you have to be careful to. Um, to have a clean edge. Okay, so I'm just gonna carve out the bowl now. Um, uh, this is this is a specialist uh, crook knife that's used for, for doing that. Um, and uh, I've marked in the edge of my bowl, uh, and the edge will go right up to the to the original pencil mark. Um, now, because this is a cooking spoon, it's not going to be carved out very deep because it doesn't need to be deep. It just needs to, to be uh, reasonably lightweight. So I'm going to take, I'm really taking out uh, a lot of the weight out of this thick part of the neck and the main part of the bowl. So um, This is quite a specialist uh, tool and it's very sharp and it's very flexible. So you can use it for um, not just for spoons, you can actually use it for bowls as well, for carving out bowls. It's particularly good for cleaning out the inside of bowls after you finish 
chiseling out the curves. You can go in with this and um, and get a nice smooth finish. Rounding off the end of the handle is always a good idea. It's a bit nicer to use. This is another reason why you keep a square profile when you're carving the handle, because otherwise it will get it won't stay symmetrical. You can get carried away carving handles and you might end up with a short handle if you're not careful. So I always allow an extra half inch for the handle because if it's too long you can always trim it down, if it's too short you can't stick a bit on. quite a chunky cooking spoon but it'd be good for making soup or whatever. Quite traditional to take a, a a sort of an angle an angled chamfer off the edge of the of the sharp edges. And again, something you practice, you have to practice. To make these nice little curly shavings. 